Hello, Carrie Roberts here, and welcome to this Atomic Spotlight. Today, we're going to be looking at Miter Attack Technique T1562, Technique number 1562, Impaired Defenses. There are several subcategories of this technique. There are nine subcategories, including disabling or modifying tools that would be like changing um, antivirus, turning it off or turning parts of it off or adding exceptions. We could disable or evade various types of logging or sub-technique number 10. We could do a downgrade to an older version of something like an older version of PowerShell that doesn't support some of the security features of the latest version. But today we're looking at a new atomic test that was added to the Atomic Red Team Library of Scripted Cyber Text. It doesn't quite fit into one of these subcategories, so it's been added under the base technique number of T1562. So let's jump over to the Atomic Red Team Library. And here we have technique 1562, impaired defenses, and we have one new atomic test that was contributed by Mike Hag. So we're thankful for that. It's disable Windows LSA protection. So LSA is the local security authority. It manages passwords and credential materials on Windows and it's the target of many attacks because hacker tools and malware like to connect to the LSA process and try to look through the memory for secrets, password hashes, or clear text passwords. So it's a really important process to protect. Well, Windows has an option to configure the LSA process as a protected process. What does protected process mean? Well, we can go look over here at this blog post by Kapersky that lists out PPL, Protected Process Lite, is a technology to protect processes from things like being shut down, from other process being able to access their memory or debug them because debuggers can interrogate the program and see potentially sensitive information. So that's what a protected process is. There's a great write-up or blog post from the DFER report about phosphorus automating initial access using proxy shell, but part and part of this attack in their timeline, they show that some of the steps taken by this malware group was to disable LSA protection. So that's what we're gonna look at today. We have this great timeline in the blog post. We have great explanations and even commands that were run by the malware. So here we have a diagram on the blog post showing that reg.exe was used to add a registry key for run as PPL, a protected life process telling the SSA don't run as a protected process, so setting it to zero. So this step was taken by the malware to make it easier for them to access credential material in the local security authority subsystem. Let's back, jump back into the atomic test. So here I am in the atomic library and we have this atomic test and it's a simple registry command to add that same registry key setting it to zero just like that malware and it has the references there to that great blog post and then there's also a cleanup command that you can execute after you emulate the attack to erase that registry key which typically does not exist by default so on my system this registry key doesn't exist which means it's not explicitly set whether LSA should run as a protected process or not. We can check this by using a tool from Microsoft Sys internals called Process Explorer. So let's open that. So over here we have this column. It's normally, it doesn't come on by default. So normally this is unselected, this column, protection column. And so you don't see that. You just see this other information about all the processes. But we're interested in knowing the protection level of each process. So we've come in here and we've we right clicked on the columns and select columns. We want to turn on the protection column so we can see what's protected. So now we look here and we scroll down through here and we see that nothing's protected. 
which seems unusual that nothing would be listed as protective. Maybe LS, LSAS isn't listed as protective, but we'd expect something to be here. So when I first looked into this, I thought that since I was doing my testing from a virtual machine, that maybe VMware didn't support protective processes. And I spent the next hour Googling whether or not VMware supported the use of protective processes. And ultimately in the end, I realized that in order to see the protection level, you have to run Process Explorer as an admin. So that was a frustrating loss of an hour of my life, but that's a typical day in my life playing with computers. So let's learn that lesson the easy way and close Process Explorer. And we're going to right click and run as administrator so we can see the information we're after. There we go. We have some protected processes here winning it csrss svc host very good let's search for lsas where lsa resides and it's not listed as protected this that's because on this system that registry key doesn't exist so it hasn't been explicitly turned on let's go ahead and turn it on so we can bring up our administrative powershell prompt and I have a reg.exe command here to add this registry key, the LSA key, and set it to a value of one, which means we want our LSAS process to run as a protective process. And let's return to our process explorer and refresh. And that didn't work, so I think we need to exit out of Process Explorer and start it again, run as administrator to see the change. Okay, fine. I guess I'm wrong. You actually have to restart the computer. Let's give that a try. Now we're back. We'll try this one more time for LSAS and there we go protected signer LSA so in order for a process to be able to interrogate the LSAS process and have the capability of doing things like finding passwords and credential information in clear text in this process it needs to be a trusted or assigned processor driver this is something an attacker group could do but it makes the barrier to entry much higher. So here we have an administrative PowerShell session. We're in a folder where I have installed Mimikatz, a tool designed to gather credentials from the LSAS process. It's something that has been used maliciously by attackers for years and something that antivirus is constantly trying to make sure can't run. So this is just the standard release of Mimikatz from the GitHub webpage. It's heavily signatured by antivirus, meaning it doesn't work out of the box against antivirus because it's been published and vendors have worked to explicitly block these versions. Attackers have the option to make modifications that can bypass AV still. But for testing purposes, I'm going to go ahead and disable the built-in AV here, Windows Defender, just to allow us to run the Mimikatz since today we're not trying to show how to get past antivirus. We're just demonstrating the LSA protection mechanism. We're going to use set MP preference, disable real-time monitoring to true, to temporarily turn Windows Defender protection off to allow us to run Mimikatz. At this point, we do have LSA protection turned on, so LSAS is a protected process as we saw in our Process Explorer, which should block us from running Mimikatz. So let's give it a try running Mimikatz to grab credential information from LSAS. So here we have Mimikatz. So the typical way to use this is to ask for elevated privileges for the process. So we ask for debug privileges and we have that. And at this point, we would typically run a command to show us passwords. But when we try to run this, we get an error, couldn't acquire a handle on memory. And this is precisely because we have LSA protection enabled. 
let's compare that to what would happen if we turned LSA protection off, which is something we have implemented in our Atomic Red Team library of scripted cyber attacks. So we can use our execution framework, invoke atomic test, give it the technique number T1562, impair defenses. We could start off with show details brief just to see if there's more than one test here and which test we want to run, but there is only one. Uh, disable LSA protection. So let's take off the brief and show the full details. And this is just what we saw on the web in the markdown file. We're going to add a registry key to turn that protection off. So we'll clear the screen. Let's take off show details to actually run this test. So we're setting that registry key to zero. The operation completed successfully. So now we've configured LSAS to not be protected. So hang tight while we restart again and then repeat the running of LSAS to see the difference now that we've emulated the attack where we disabled that protected process. Okay, and we're back and we look in our process explorer just to confirm, search for LSAS, not a protected process. Go into our Mimikatz folder and run Mimikatz again. We'll run the same commands. Ask for debug privileges and passwords. Last time we got an error. This time we get all the credential information that was able to be found in the LSAS process because it wasn't protected. For example, we have the Atomic Red Team art user, our current user. It's listing here our NTLM password, which could be used for pass the hash, or could also be potentially cracked on a password cracker, depending on how complex the password is, or even just looked up online for password that, with the same hash that's already been cracked. We don't see any clear text password, so we don't see the actual password other than the hash value. Even in WDigest, WDigest is off by default on the latest operating systems, but when it's configured and turned on, it always stores passwords in clear text. So when WDigest is on, you will see the clear text password for the users here. And we're going to play with that at the end. So I mentioned that protected processes don't allow unsigned drivers and processes to access their memory in powerful ways, like accessing their virtual memory, running a debugger, which is what a tool like Mimikatz needs. But Mimikatz does come with a driver. We list out the contents in our download folders. We got Mimikatz exe, and we also got the mimidriver.sys, and it actually is signed. Now, of course, that signature has been outlawed by AVs to not allow it to run, but it's still a demonstration that attackers can also sign their own tools to allow this attack still to work. So I'm going to go back and re-enable the LSA protection and restart the computer. And then we're going to demonstrate how we can bypass that original error by instructing Mimikatz to load the signed driver. Okay, and we're back. We have LSAT as a protected process again. We're going to demonstrate Mimikatz getting around the protected process of course, uh, this driver, the sign driver has been signatured, but it does show that there are options for getting around this protection. We run Mimikatz. confirm that the process protection is blocking us. And then Mimikatz provides us some commands that we can use to tell it to load that sign driver. So in this case, I already have the Mimi driver registered because I've run this before. And I instruct Mimikatz to remove the process protection bit from the LSS process. Now it's unprotected, and when we try to dump the passwords, it works just like when LSA protection was not enabled. Cool, and while we're in here talking about credentials and things, it's 
always fun to look at W Digest since W Digest always stores passwords in clear text, which is why nowadays it's turned off by default. But let's go ahead and turn that back on. This is a, a an attacker technique as well to get those passwords to be stored in clear text. Over here in Atomic Red Team, we have Atomic Test number three under technique T1112. And it sets the registry key, WDigest, to enable WDigest in order to get Windows to store clear text credentials in the LSAS process. After which, we can use a tool like Mimicat to recover those clear text passwords in instead of just the hashes that we're able to get otherwise. So we can use our invoke atomic red team command, invoke atomic test D1112. I think we want test number three. Let's make sure. Let's show details. Yep, that's turning uh, W Digest on. Let's do that. We can go ahead and erase the show details. That will change that registry key by running this command here. And we see a Windows Defender pop up. So it looks like Defender is not real excited about having W Digest turned back on and it's removing that threat. In order to play around with this, we can go ahead and allow this this time. An attacker, uh, knowing that Defender acts like this, would usually use a way to disable Defender before they make this change. Let's double check the value of this key to see if the change was made. Instead of reg add, we'll change it to reg query and we'll look at this. And it doesn't look like it was set. Check it one more time. Here we have use log on credential set to one. In order for this to take effect, we don't need to fully restart. We can just log out and log back in. And we're locked back in. We have W Digest enable. We'll be able to see clear text credentials. So let's demonstrate that by running Mimicats and then dumping the credentials. And here we have the clear text password for the art user in W Digest. This was listed as null before, but because we enabled W Digest. The LSS process stores clear text credentials and tools like Mimicats can get that out of the LSS process if they can access that process because it's not protected or because they're using a sign driver. That's it for Atomic Spotlight today. I hope you've enjoyed this journey into Windows credentials and the awesome Mimicats tool. If you'd like to learn more about Atomic Red Team and all things attack emulation, Check out my attack emulation tools course from Anti-Siphon Training.